Good morning and happy Sabbath. I see that it says, Happy Mother's Day Sabbath today. So, to start out for our welcome, I thought we'd talk a little bit about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Who was Mary? Well, she was from Nazareth. She wasn't one that you saw um, and noticed immediately. She was busy doing her work. She was kind. She was thoughtful. She was a wife. She was a mother. She was a homemaker, right? And something happened in Luke 1.28. The angel told Mary that she was highly favored by God. God noticed her, not because she was loud, not because she was noticed doing things, but by her character. And she, had, she was a woman of rare strength. She was amazing, right? She was the only human that would be with Jesus throughout his entire life, from his birth until his death. And Mary gave birth to Jesus as her baby, and she watched him die as her savior. But the overall key about Mary is she was willing, she was faithful, and she was very willing to obey God. She was willing to accept God's plan no matter what the cost would be to her. What an amazing woman and mother. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day, a day that we can set aside and spend time with you, dear Lord, and, and as we begin our worship service, dear Lord, bless it. And bless those that are participating. Bless each person that is here in person or online watching. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. So to we continue have a, our Mother's Day theme, we would like you all to stand and sing with mothers in the family, happy, happy home. Now, please stand, and we are going to have it be like we are at home on our couches, and we are gonna sing like we're singing together a cappella. You know what a cappella means? It's just our voices and no piano. Okay, so let's move to the words so we can kind of get oriented. We're going to sing it twice. It's going to be with mothers in the family, then the next one will be Jesus in the family. So we're going to sing a cappella like we're in our homes. You ready? With mothers in the family, happy, happy home, happy, happy home. Happy, happy home with mothers in the family. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home with Jesus in the family. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home with Jesus in the family. Happy, happy home, happy, happy home. Thank you so much. Now, anybody that would like to turn around, say happy Sabbath, a greeting, a hug, a handshake, a wave, whatever you would like, please do so now, and then we'll go to our announcements. Happy Sabbath, Church, and Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> All right, so um, do you see church looks a little bit different today? Yeah? <laughs> so beautiful. We have so talented people here who have spent a lot of time and effort to decorate the church with beautiful flowers here. So I'd like to thank the 
the people who have done it. So thank you so much. Church looks very beautiful. Um, <clears throat> a few announcements to share. I'd like to welcome all our church members, church family, and guests that are here today. So I see some people that are here, so I'd like to uh, welcome all of you. Please feel at home, and please, uh, we are happy and glad you are here to join us. Our potluck is starting from today. Wow. <laughs> so it's been, what, over two years that we haven't had like a regular potluck, and we are going to start from today. It was um, people, we wanted to do it, it's just that we couldn't really start it, but we are going to start and see how it is. And um, Potluck Mingle Ministry starts today immediately and uh, following the worship service. So today after service, we are going to serve lunch. So it's, we call it Potluck, but it's lunch. So anybody can join. If you didn't bring lunch, no one brought lunch. So please come join us. Church is providing lunch today. So please come join us. And it will be there every week. So please come. And if you would like to join this potluck ministry, please see Jewel. Uh, she's sitting in the back. If you can raise your hand. So if you can see Jewel. And if you want to be part of the team and, hey, I want to contribute, either you can contribute your hour time and you can come here and help, or you can um, fund it. You can donate some funds. You can go to church's website. You can go to the, the offering, um, offering envelope, and you can write down potluck ministry. And that will go toward that. So please keep that in mind when you want to join the uh, potluck ministry. But please come join us for the potluck that we have. Deacons meeting. Since we are starting potluck, we, need to, we have a job to do for deacons. So uh, if you can stay behind after, after service for a 10-minute meeting, that would be great. We'll meet right here in the front. Okay, and Pathfinder Sabbath is next week, May 14th. So Pathfinders will come up and they'll perform and they would um, share what they have earned this year and so on. We'll have a great time with Pathfinders next week. So please keep that in mind. <clears throat> and also baptism for Celeste and Vanessa. Celeste and Vanessa, where are you? Oh, Vanessa is here. Celeste is not present today, but Vanessa is getting baptized, or Celeste, they are getting baptized on June 4th. That's about a month from now. Very excited for them. They have decided to get baptized. So um, just keep that in mind. We will celebrate their baptism on June 4th. And VBS is starting. So VBS, we mentioned this before. Uh, we are going to have VBS and we will have a... Kira, yeah, she's excited. I'm excited too. <laughs> um, we'll have someone from VBS come up and share a quick announcement about what's happening. It will be an in-person VBS. We had online VBS for the past two years. It was great, but in-person is way more fun. And we will have in-person VBS uh, starting from June 13 to 18. So everyone pull your phone out, pull your phone out, mark your calendar right now, June 13 to 18, 5 p.m. here at church. So here you go. All right, happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, so Pastor pretty much did all my work. Thank you. <laughs> but here is your um, QR code. I'm going to post that up in the sanctuary for you. It's got all the information here, like Pastor said, will be from 5 to 8. From 5 to 5.30 is when we're serving dinner, so don't worry about having to get food and things ahead of time. We've got you covered. Just come, show up, bring your little ones. More importantly, while we have VBS, the Monday, oh, I am keeping it up for now. I'll speak a little louder, project my voice. I am a teacher, right? Um, so the 13th through the 17th is going to be VBS for the kids, but on the 18th, that's Sabbath, that's the big special day, that's the culmination of everything we've done. So if you, as a non-childbearing individual, weren't able to come to VBS to see what we've done, please be here that Sabbath so that you can see everything that the kids have been learning and that you can continue to support the VBS program. Again, this poster will be out in the, the four-year area. If you have any questions, feel free to see me or Janice or Mia. Young. Thank you so much. Excited for VBS. And <clears throat> the next announcement is that uh, Adult and Children's Sabbath School uh, is well, 
that we, we having, we've been having the adult and children's Sabbath school from that time. It's in your bulletin too. So keep that in mind, we have the uh, Sabbath school. And uh, yeah, Youth Rush, we'll skip this one. <coughs> Uh, you can order the free uh, home COVID test kit uh, the second time. So I know many of you have ordered the first test kit and you got the four set now, right? If you haven't gotten it, you can order the first one and uh, it's not a scam, you can still get it. I mean, you, you can actually get it and you can now order the second kit. You can go to the website that's there on the screen or on your bulletin or you can just Google um, free home kit or home COVID test kit and uh, it's from the government and it will come to your mail, I mean come to your house in the mail. So please keep that in mind and take advantage of it. All right, and we'll continue our service with the program. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Well, today is a very special day because it's a, gonna, it's a high Sabbath. We are going to honor a few moms today in our church. On behalf of fellowship, worship, and family ministries, we have prepared something special. Um, but I'd like to begin by reading a poem. And this poem is for all the women in our church, whether you've had children or you've had no children, Every single woman in our church plays a special role, and that is a mother figure role. So this poem is for you. A Mother's Love. There are times when only a mother's love can understand our tears, can soothe our disappointments, and calm all of our fears. There are times when only a mother's love can share the joy we feel. When something we've dreamed about quite quite suddenly is real. There are times when only a mother's faith can help us on life's way and inspire us the confidence we need from day to day. For a mother's heart and a mother's faith and a mother's steadfast love were fashioned by the angels and sent from God above. I'd like to introduce Janice Hensel to come and help me in honoring our mothers. So we're gonna do a member spotlight. Um, this person that I'm gonna call forward reminds me a lot of my granny. You've heard me talk about my granny. So this person reminds me a lot of my granny, warm, loving, accepting of all, um, a smile that never ends, and the list goes on. What, somebody that loves God and wants to teach others about God. And so I would like to, let's go to the next slide, I would like to call up Estella and have you come forward. And this is Amelia's grandma, see this picture there? Sweet. Oh, good. And here comes Amelia as well. <laughs> Great. Come right on up here. I'm going to have you be able to have a microphone to speak into, okay? And this is Amelia, right? How old is Amelia? eight years old welcome amelia we've heard a lot about you for many years at least eight <laughs> okay so i'm going to ask estella a few questions estella what did you used to do for work i was a teacher, I was a teacher at the guatemalan uh, american Institute in Guatemala City. In Guatemala. So I, if you heard that, she was a teacher um, teaching students in Guatemala, right? Excellent, excellent. And how many children do you have? Three. 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 Girls, boys? Uh, one boy and two girls. One boy and two girls. Where's the boy in that order? The Is he oldest. first? 
the oldest. He's the youngest. The oldest. Oh, the oldest. Okay, yes. so one boy, the oldest, and then two girls. Two girls. Okay, and we have one daughter here I see yes. in the back. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you could come today. All right. If there was some piece of wisdom that you would like to share with others, what would that be? Well, uh, for me, I think that uh, uh, take God seriously and uh, uh, developing a, a very uh, deep and close relationship with Jesus. Amen. That is. That's your wisdom. Yes. That is, I think, Do you hear that okay? Okay. D Come here, Estella. I'm going to have you say it. I'll take this. You go right up here and say it right in there. Say it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that the most important thing for me is uh, a uh, thanking God seriously and developing a, a very close and deep relationship with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Estella. We have some flowers in honor for you today. <laughs> You can see Estella later because she is huggable. <laughs> and thank you, Amelia, for helping. <laughs> okay. Here, give her a hug. <laughs> so Amelia has been coming to VBS. I'm behind you, actually. Amelia has been coming to VBS for quite some time, and I understand that Estella has been coming to this church for 16 years. Wow. Can you give her another Amen. applause? Amen. We are now going to honor some other mothers, and Lizelle and Janice are going to help me with the flowers. So if we could go to the next slide. Your Lee. <laughs> Yorley, please stand. Come out here. Come out here. First of all, if you have not met Yorley, you need to because she gives great hugs and she's an awesome cook. Okay? <laughs> and she has three amazing children. We have Emma, Sophia, and Noah. And right now, we want to honor you, and you can look forward. Liz you can stay right here. Lizelle is going to say some things about you that she has really appreciated. So, Yorley is a very special woman at our church. In Adventure Club, there are several children that can be a handful. <laughs> but Yorley, with her arms wide open and her heart full, she accepts all these children. I'm going to cry. Okay. <laughs> she is an amazing example of a mother. And whenever she sees a mother like who has trouble, she just goes to the child and says, come, 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 sit on my lap. And every um, month, we um, celebrate the birthdays. And one of her many talents is to bake cake. So if you haven't tried her cake yet, it's amazing. So we just want to honor you this Mother's Day, Yorley. They're going to come bring you some very bright flowers. And you might need to give Lizelle a hug. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Yorley, for being a wonderful mother in our church. We have another mother we want to recognize. And the next slide. Janice, can you bring those flowers over? Surprise, Ashley. Your husband worked with us on this one. We want to honor Ashley. And her newest addition, their newest addition, is Mr. Joseph. And we love Blair. And Ashley, we want to thank you so much, and, and Ricky, too, for bringing Blair to the Children's Choir, to VBS. Ricky, for helping and bringing your family. 
And we just really want you to know how much we love you and appreciate you, and we want to give you some flowers. Can I come? Okay. All right, our next slide is the oldest and the most wisest mom and the newest mom. And I'm going to guess, is anybody 88 years old? <laughs> is anybody older than 88? We're going to give oldest mom to Maria. Now, come over here, Maria. Oldest doesn't mean anything. Look at Maria. She wants to live an amazing life. She is going to be 89 in June. Can you give her a hand? Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. You are from Puerto Rico, okay? She speaks excellent English. Don't let her fool you. And she has two daughters, and her youngest daughter is named Brenda. Imagine that, yeah. So, Maria, thank you so much. She lives, you live in Rancho Santa Fe, okay? Very good, and we love Maria in our family, and we wanna honor you with some flowers. Our newest mom is ill today. We are gonna bring Jasmine forward to accept on behalf of Yuri, and come on forward, Jasmine. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> but Jasmine is going to deliver the flowers to Yuri this afternoon. And Yuri, you are being honored today. She is on live stream right now, but she's not feeling good. So we have flowers for Yuri. And her newest little addition is a little boy named Ronan, and he is four weeks old this week. So can you give Yuri and Ro Ronan a hand? Okay, if you could take, um, go to the next slide. Now we have a few pictures. Some of you to put in some pictures. This is Dr. Alvin Hensel's mother and father. And Dr. Hensel is over here, and he contributed this photo. And boy, Alvin, you look like both of them, and your sister looks like your mom, so that's great. And the next picture. Can you guess whose mom this is? Bonnie, you got it! Next slide, Bonnie. Now, Bonnie does not like a lot of attention, but I will let you know that Bonnie was <clears throat> brought into the church by um, her husband, family. She has been at our church for about 43 years. She has been our church clerk and our treasurer for probably over 20. And Bonnie, you're amazing. And we are giving you flowers this morning. And I know you don't like the attention, but she is the pillar of our church. Bonnie is the pillar of our church. Next slide. Liz Park and her mom and children and grandma and everybody. So that's beautiful picture. Okay, next picture. Okay, this is my sweet mother. She passed away 13 years ago, but these are some of my favorite pictures. She always had a smile on her face and she was five foot one and my sister is five eight and I'm five ten. So she was, she was quite, a, quite a pillar in our family. Next picture. Christine, Christine, there's your mom. Christine, what's your mom's name? Carol? Great. Next picture. Helen and Helen's mom. Now is, Helen, where are you? Now the lady on the left, who's that? Your mother-in-law and the lady on the right is your mom and Helen's in the middle. So happy Mother's Day, Helen. Next, next picture, Janice. Janice's mom is on the left, and Janice's mom and sister are in the middle. But Janice, everybody knows stories of Granny, right? Well, that's Janice's Granny. Next picture. And there is Janice and her two sons, Ron and John. And next picture. Jasmine. Jasmine is JJ and Ashley's mom. Aren't they cute? They are so cute. Next picture. Carla. Carla. Are the Rivas family here? No? Okay, well there's Carla, and she is Elias and Eddie's mom. Next picture. Kira. Kira's here. 
Look at those pictures. I like the before and after with the tent. Pajamas and then a class A uniform. That's awesome. Very good. Jeremiah and Zaza. And then Lizelle, we have Liam's mom. Next picture. Lourdes, Lourdes, where are you? Where are you, Lourdes? Oh, there's Lourdes, and she has all those beautiful grandchildren. She's Ruth and Lizelle's mom, and the next picture is, should be Ruth. And I don't think they're here, but they have the, well, oh, hi! Happy Mother's Day, you guys. There's a picture of your beautiful family. And the next picture? Mary, Sabrina's mom. Yay. <laughs> All right, next picture. And Cherie, Cherie is over here in the corner. Have you guys met Cherie? Have you met Cherie? She is over here. She has been coming to a church for what, about a year? You started in COVID? Yeah? Something like that? Okay. Very good. And then the next picture. Genya. Genya submitted this picture. I haven't seen Genya today. I don't know if he's on duty or not. So I wanted to make sure that we recognize that. And then I think that's it. What's the next picture? Mother's Day flowers. So kids, come on forward. Grandma Janice and Aunt Lizelle are going to hand you flowers. You hand them out to all the girls in the room, OK? All the moms, grandmas, and we're going to have some music playing. As the kids are passing out the flowers, I want to just make note of one beautiful lady who I love dearly. She is 82 years old, but she won't tell you that. She has been in our church longer than we can even imagine. It is Sharon Marlowe, a mother of a twins and a daughter and several grandchildren. Please acknowledge Sharon for being a mother of our church. And once the flowers are handed out, if there's leftovers, you can come after the service and bring some to a neighbor or another relative. And we'll continue with our worship with Janice giving a special dedicatory prayer for our mothers once the flowers are passed out. Thank you. Time for our community prayer. Those that are able, I'm going to ask you to kneel with me as we have a special Mother's Day prayer. We'll start with our song.
Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being our God. You're amazing. And you are our teacher, dear Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for the things that we can look at in your life as our example and follow, dear Lord. We are also thankful for Mary, who is your mother, and how she was faithful and she was obedient. And she raised Jesus and taught Jesus everything that you wanted her to do. She stood by his side. She stayed with him from birth until death. And even though a lot of those things were hard, seeing Jesus being treated cruelly and bullied and called names, she stayed right there with him. And most importantly, our dear Lord, she obeyed your command. She did your will and had Jesus as her baby. And she was always faithful and obedient to you. So, dear Lord, we have a big thank you for all these mothers represented in the audience, dear Lord. We've talked about a few, and we ask a special blessing on the, those that we specifically talked about, dear Lord. But every single person out there that has done a mother role, whether they have a biological child or not, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for their love. Thank you for their leadership. And most of all, thank you for them leading their children to you. And so, dear Lord, as we continue our service, we want to lift up Pastor Bay as he is bringing the word to you, dear Lord, and bless us this very Sabbath day, dear Lord, and we ask for the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and into our lives and to guide our lives, dear Lord. Thank you, and we ask all of these things in your name. Amen. been asked to uh, read five proverbs this morning and um, how many of you know what a proverb is I'm going to read uh, one of the proverbs it's not the text I'm going to do today but to give you the theory on how a proverb works this is from Proverbs 22 2. the rich and the poor have this in common that's the first part of a proverb and then here comes the punchline the Lord is the maker of them all. So it's a statement and then something that means something. How many of you had a mother or a father that used to, when you were doing something wrong or something special, they would say, da 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 That's a proverb. And so one of the ones that I remember, which is a German proverb, is if horses were free, then there's a punchline there. Or uh, her lips are smooth, a punchline. So I'm going to read five punchlines, um, five proverbs here from Proverbs 31, 26 to 30. This is speaking of mothers and women. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is a law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. 
Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Thank you. Who is your favorite mother in the Bible? Yes, Zaza. <laughs> Abigail. <laughs> there are so many to choose from, right? There are so many beautiful, amazing mothers in the Bible. Well, this morning, I want to focus on two very special. I think they are the most amazing mothers in the Bible. That's why my sermon title is that. The first one that I'm going to talk about is this woman. She doesn't even have a name in the Bible. As a matter of fact, her daughter doesn't even have a name written in the Bible either. Her story is found in 2 Kings chapter 5. This girl is a servant girl, but she wasn't born a servant. She was just a happy little girl in Israel in a happy family. But one day, the Aramean armies came to conquer Israel, and they killed Ahab, the king. And her family was torn apart. Her life is torn apart, as a matter of fact. They captured her as a slave girl or a servant girl, and they brought her to uh, Aram. And she was serving as a servant uh, to Naaman's wife. It wouldn't be a too much of a stretch to say that her parents might have been killed in the war, right? And if that's the case, then it's possible that she might have seen, she might have witnessed her parents being killed. That's just an uh, imagination, but regardless, she went through a war. Do you think it would be an easy thing for a girl to go through a war and separate it from her hometown, her family, and be alone in a foreign land as a servant. What would you do if you went through that? You know, right now, there is a war going on in Ukraine. And uh, Zenya is not here today. He's in, in Sacramento visiting somewhere. But Zenya's grandmother came because she was in Ukraine. She was living in on the other side of where um, the capital is but still she felt unsafe and they managed to bring her here. So she came here last week. She arrived here last week and they were praying that she'll be able to cross the border from Mexico to here and um, thank God that she's here safely. But people who are going through, you, you're watching what's going on on the news and it's just, it's just heartbreaking to see what's going on there uh, in the war. But something similar had happened in her life. And you can just imagine the things that she went through. She probably has, she could probably have PTSD. But if you look at her life, is she complaining? Do you hear her just mad about her life and angry about her life? No. As a matter of fact, what she does is very interesting. Uh, her story is in, found in 2 Kings chapter 5, and this is what she says. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 2. Now bands from uh, Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So we know this story very well. Her uh, mistress and her husband Naaman, who was the commander of the army of Aram, was a uh, mighty man. He was able, he was capable, he was strong, and he was uh, able to capture or, or win wars victorious many times. And as successful as he was, his 
uh, uh, secret or his, his uh, problem was that he had what kind of disease? Leprosy. Leprosy today is nothing, really. If you take medications, if you get treatment, you know, it's fine. You don't need to worry about it. But in the Bible times, there was no cure. It was considered incurable disease. And that was considered a, a curse from God. But this girl is talking to her mistress, saying that if only my master could go see who? The prophet in Samaria, my hometown, my home country, then he would cure him of his leprosy. Now, how many stories do you hear besides the time of Jesus in the Old Testament that someone who had leper, leprosy became healed? How many? A few. You know, you, you hear a few stories of someone getting healed, but that's a very rare instance of prophets performing miracles. If you look at an average leper who doesn't get healed and who is separated and gets eventually die, they, they eventually die in the end. This girl, first of all, she does not hate her master. Who is the reason why she's here? Who is probably the reason why she's separated from her family? Who is possibly the reason why her parents possibly got killed, right? Wouldn't you have grudges against this man? Wouldn't you be angry at this man? But she has no, nothing against him. As a matter of fact, she has this little girl, possibly 10 or 12 years old. She has compassion over this man. She feels sorry for him. If I were her, even if I wasn't angry at him, I would feel when she learned that he has leprosy, she would have thought, you know what? He deserves it. He's a bad guy. He killed my family, or at least he torn my family apart. She could have said that, but she doesn't. And she says, I wish he would go and see the prophet in my home country. He would heal him of his leprosy. Is it an easy thing to say? I mean, just put yourself in her shoes. Would you say that? No, that's your problem. If it is my dad, that's another story. But that's just my master who caused me this trouble, this problem, why I'm here, why I'm not with my family. You know, she might have been a girl who had great dreams. Who knows? She probably wanted to be uh, a teacher. Maybe she wanted to be a, a um, who knows? She might have had a great dream to be a, a leader like Deborah or maybe like a famous midwife, like uh, Shifra. You know a famous midwife in the Bible, Shifra? Uh, like the OB doctor back then? A wise mother like Jochebed, or a teacher like Hulda, or like a queen like Esther. She might have this great dream of, of becoming someone important, but because of this man, her dream is crushed, and she's living here in a foreign land as a servant. But she's saying something like this, to give him another chance. But let's think about this. If Naaman, who is desperate, because he knows that he's dying, who is desperate, listens to her and believes her and goes through the trouble of going to find this prophet in Israel, and if he gets healed, great. You know, he'll probably come home and he will reward her for something. But if he does not get healed, Ooh, what's going to happen to her? Have you thought about that? She'll be punished. And it's possible that she may be killed if that happens, right? And is leprosy, leprosy an easy thing to heal? Oh, I, I caught a cold, you know. I just need to wait uh, like maybe five days a week, then I'll be healed. Or maybe I have some kind of simple disease that you can fix. No, leprosy is something that nobody can fix. There is no cure. And she's brave enough to say, I wish my master can go. This is, so Naaman goes to talk to his king in Aram and Ben-Hadad, 
who sends a message to the king of Judah, now this becomes a, a, a matter between the two nations, two countries. And the king of Judah gets upset. Now this is some kind of trap. He is trying to pick a fight on me. And she elevated the status, elevated the problem from a family issue to all the way to the national issue. You see that? That's what she did. She's, she's so there. She, she dared to say something like that. And she's not thinking. Maybe she's too young and too naive to, to think through all this. But she's brave enough to say something like this. And she does that, and Naaman goes. And he almost didn't get healed. You remember that story? He almost left because he was so angry and upset. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go through that humiliating process of getting, stripping my clothes off and then washing in that dirty river, Jordan. No, no way. I'm not going to do that. But eventually he gets healed. So then, how would she get some kind of, why would she be able to do that? How would she be able to do something like that? Because that doesn't just happen. Like, she can't just have natural love like that in her heart. That had to be put in her to be able to do that. So how is it? So there is a quote that I want to share from Patrick and Prophets and King, page 247. It's on the screen. It says, The conduct of the captive maid, the way, the sh- the, the way that she bore herself in the hidden home, is a strong witness to the power of what? Early home training. There is no higher truth than that committed to fathers and mothers in the care and training of their children. Parents have to do with the very foundations of habit and character by their example and teaching the fu- by, exam- by their example and teaching, the future of their children is largely decided. So Ellen White is basically saying that her training of how she became a witness in a situation where she could have said, you know what, forget it, this is it for me. And she could have lived a very negative life. As a matter of fact, she turned that chance or opportunity into a chance to witness. And we now know that her influence impacted not only her family, but Naaman's family, and to the king of Aram, and to the people of Israel, down to you and me, because we are reading the story and learning about her. And that influence came from what? Her family home and the early training. And my friends, you and I have the same responsibility. And I want to point out that the moms have the power to do that at home. And I know many of you sitting here, many moms, have that influence on the children. And if we don't have that influence on our children, then it is our prayer request that we would do that. Our moms will be able to have that influence on our children. You know, her parents didn't know that her or their daughter will one day go to a foreign land and she'll be alone in the place and put in that place where she'll have to stand up for her truth and she would believe in God and testify to other people, someone like a general, to him saying that, you know what, go see the prophet in my home country and he will heal you. And what if he doesn't get healed? But she does that. She exercises her faith. Her parents didn't know but in her young age, she was able to witness. Question, what will our little children do when the parents are not around? What would your children do when they're not around, when you are not around? Because when parents are around, yeah, they will behave because the parents are there, mom and dad are there, because they know that mom and dad are like, "Uh uh-uh, no, no, they will do that. But when parents are not there, what would your children do? talking about your adult, grown-up children, because now they're on their own. They are not under your wings. What do they do? Do they respect? Do they serve God? Do they uh, honor God in their ways? You know, none of us can say, oh, my children will be fine. My children will love the Lord. 
because none of us can say that safely. If your children are doing well, praise the Lord. If your children are not currently in God, serving God, on, 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 on fire for God, we all have to pray that, that God will do that. God will keep them safe. <laughs> that, that really is a, a solemn question. I'm asking myself, my wife, all of us, can we ask that question? The second mother that I want to share about is Hannah, the woman of prayer. And there are many women in the Bible who had amazing prayers, but Hannah, I believe, is one of the best. I mean, it's hard to choose, <laughs> to be honest, but Hannah had... I'll, I'll tell you why. You will see the reason why I chose Hannah as, as one of the topics or one of the amazing mothers that I chose. First Samuel 1 shares the story of Hannah, and you, this is also another well-known story, but um, Hannah prayed for her son, Samuel, and she was born. I mean, he was born. <clears throat> she was able to give birth to this special miracle child, Samuel. And the name Samuel means God has heard or uh, heard of God or asked of God. And Samuel is very special in a way that Samuel is the first in many different ways. Okay, let me share a few. Samuel was the last judge. So what's a judge? In the book of Judge, there are 12 judges. And in the book of Samuel, there are two more. Eli and Samuel are also the judge. So judges are the people who worked as the leader of the king, uh, uh, Israel, and the land of Israel, or the kingdom of Israel, because there was no king. God is their king, is theocracy. So God is their king, and the judge was there in between God and his people to give God's message, and, um, and like a mediator in between God and human beings, or his people. But people wanted a king like other nations, so they asked for a king, and the first king in Israel is who? Saul, and the second is David. We talked about that, talked about, studied about them for a while. But the very last judge before the kings became the ruler of Israel is who? Is Samuel. Samuel. So Samuel is the very last judge. At the same time, he is from the line of or the tribe of Levi. So he is a priest. At the same time, so he's a priest and he is a judge and he is also a prophet. So he's a prophet, judge, and also, remember, his mother prayed that I will not drink anything. I will not have him drink anything from grapes. And I will not cut his hair. What do you call that kind of person who is specially devoted from the childhood? Samson was like that. Nazarite. So Samuel is a Nazarite too. And also, he anointed the first two kings in Israel, Saul and David. And he wrote the book of Samuel. The first book of Samuel he wrote. Second book, probably Gad and Nathan wrote that. Uh, so he is an amazing person. And also he founded two schools of the prophet in his time. And there are four others, four more came out after him. So Samuel is an amazing person. And his character is really, really great. In verse 24 of 1 Samuel, says this. Verse 24, so this is how Hannah gave birth to Samuel. And the Bible says, verse 24, 1 Samuel 1, 24, After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull and an ephod of flour, ephod of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. So she, you can see Hannah prayed for this boy, and he was born after he was weaned, and she takes him to where? The temple to serve him, to serve in the temple of God. So the key word here is he was weaned. So let me ask moms, how long did you feed your children, breastfeed your children? Until how long? Two, okay. I 
don't know. I'm not woman, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, I looked it up online. The average time period for Americans to feed or breastfeed their children is one to two. One to two years. Does it sound about right? One to two years of age? But they are recommending at least for six months. That would be the best for the health of the child. That's what they're saying. But some parts of the world, they're feeding their children until they're seven. Ooh. <laughs> that would be uh, quite difficult for moms to breastfeed their children until they're seven. But in some parts of the world, but average is one or two. In the Bible times, though, 2 Maccabee chapter 7, Ch Maccabee is the, uh, is the, uh, the Bible or the, the sacred writings outside of the canon, the 66 books of the Bible, and Catholics read that. We don't consider that as Bible, not the inspired writing, but they are, as a matter of fact, some of them actually uh, have historic values or uh, good for teaching and whatnot. Um, so they're not Bible, Bible, but they say, according to that book, Second Maccabee, says that um, Isaac, uh, Abraham's son, Isaac, was fed until he was about three years old. And the Bible practice is about three years old, until they're three. So whatever the age is, we don't know for sure what age Samuel was stopped breastfeeding or weaned. But let's imagine somewhere between three and four even you say he's five. Who is five years old? How old is Noah? He's five? Yeah. Noah is about five. So Noah, you see him standing right there. That's about him. Imagine Yuri grabbing Noah's hand and taking him to church and say, Pastor, here's Noah. He's yours. <laughs> I wish you can see her face. She's like, <gasps> like, no way. If Samuel was three. Who is three years old here? Do we have any three-year-old here in our congregation today? Oh, Jade. Jade is, oh, Jade is raising, her, raising her hand. Okay. Imagine leaving Jade at church and say, Pastor, you can take care of Jade, and I'll come to see her once a year. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no way. That's what Hannah did. Okay? Now imagine that. And she, Hannah comes to see Samuel once a year when she comes to worship. That's the story. Now, you can imagine how much she prayed for Samuel every day. And that's what I'm saying. Hannah was a, a woman of prayer. Because as we talked about earlier, home education is the key here. Here's a quote that I want to share from Patriarch and Prophet, page 572. It says, From the earliest dawn of intellect, she had taught her son to love, I'm talking about Hannah and Samuel here, to love, taught her son to love and reverence God and to regard himself as a Lord. By every familiar object surrounding him, she had taught, sought to lead his thoughts up to the Creator. So this is what, what he's saying, what Ellen White is saying, that Hannah taught Samuel, little Samuel, as soon as he started to gain some intellect, started to talk, started to recognize things, said, okay, do you see a little flower here? Do you see a little fly or, or dragonfly or butterfly or little puppies? Whatever that is. As soon as he started to recognize some things, she started to teach her to make connections from the little objects around Check. Okay, so maybe uh, something happened to the microphone here. She started to teach him to make the connection between the everyday, everyday object to the Creator God. So Samuel learned to see God. Do you see the flowers? He's thinking about God from the flowers. Do you see the sky, the trees, the animals that are running around, the birds that are singing? He's thinking about the Creator God. That's how she taught him. Not only that, 
she is teaching him to tell him that he belongs to God. So whatever I do, my time, uh, my food, whatever I can do, my ability to do things, I belong to God. Therefore, I have to watch what I do. I have to be careful what I do, how I spend my time. That's how she taught him. But let me ask you a question. Children grow, and he wasn't an adult when Samuel was dropped off at the temple, right? His character was still developing. He was still growing. He was only maybe three or five, okay? As they grow, do they soak up and do they learn more things? Yes. When they become teenagers, yes, they do. As a matter of fact, we all learn every day of our lives, even though we get... We slow down a little bit, but children, they're like sponge. They soak up all the information that you give them. Now, the environment that Samuel was put in at the temple, that must be the best environment ever that he could grow. A little boy can grow, right? Should be. He's growing under the wings of the high priest Eli. Wait, what kind of environment was that? What kind of sons did Eli have? Ooh, not so much. These boys, sons of Eli, were called Baliels, meaning they were the worst gangs ever. They were the ones who were bullying the people that are coming to church, coming to the temple, and giving sacrifice. They were the ones who would force and take things from people. They are the ones who would take the woman serving in the temple and sleeping with them. And like, that's the kind of environment that Samuel was put in. Not the best kind. But, did Samuel turn out to be like one of those? No. Samuel became to be the one of the best prophets. People looked up to him. And he had the greatest character. How is it possible? His mom's not around. She only comes once a year. Oh, it's the best time. Mom's not around. I can do whatever I want. Samuel could have done that. But Samuel, even though he was surrounded by those influences, evil influences, there is no good influence around him. All the, the, the things that the other boys are teaching him were bad, but he still turned out to be good. How? The next quote. Patriarchs and Prophet, page 572. Every day, he was the subject of her prayer. Hannah prayed for Samuel. Every year, she made with her own hands a robe of service for him. And as she went up with her husband to worship at Shiloh, she gave the child this reminder of her love. Every fiber of the little garment had been woven with a prayer that he might be pure noble and true. She did not ask for her son worldly greatness, but she earnestly pleaded that he might attain that greatness which heaven values, that he might honor God and bless his fellow men. So, did Hannah pray for Samuel? Yes, every day. And the clothes that she made for Samuel every year that she brought to Samuel, every fiber of that garment was made with, or woven with prayer. So as she was making the clothes, she prayed. Every fiber. Are we praying for our children every day? That's what we need to do. And if your prayer is not answered, and if you're if your kids are not turning out to be Samuel, then what do we need to do? We need to make some clothes. <laughs> we need to pray harder. <laughs> I don't know what she did, but Samuel turned out to be great. There are so many other women that I want to talk about in the Bible, but I need to wrap up here. Not all children turned out to be like Samuel or this unknown, unnamed girl in the Bible. There are so many stories in the Bible where we have amazing parents, but their children turn out to be bad. I don't know why, but what I do know is that God answers prayers. But also, people have their own choices. They have their own choices. 
but parents can definitely pray for them. As much as you, as the dad and mom, want your children to be saved, God also wants them to be saved. So our duty as mom and dad is that we can pray for our children. And I would like to honor all our moms here, and our, our grandmas and great-grandmas here today, and mom-to-be, and mom figures here, are, here sitting in our uh, church today, that we can pray for our children and our, whoever is looking up to you as mom or mom figure and mom-to-be, let us pray to God that we may be able to be the parents who are the mom that will have positive impact on our children so that they can be a witness to God wherever they are, wherever they go, even with your absence. And also let us pray that we would be like Hannah, praying for our child, praying for our children, and they will become like Prophet Samuel. How many of you want your children to be like Samuel and this little girl? And I pray that God will answer your prayer and God will answer our prayer so that our children will become like Samuel and this little unnamed girl. Our offering today is for the local church budget. And thank you for supporting God's church and God's mission with your offering. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for all the moms here. Lord, as the quote says, God could not be everywhere in the world so therefore, God made mothers. We thank you so much for all the moms here, and we thank you for the examples of the amazing mothers in the Bible, like this unnamed mother of this unnamed servant girl, and also Hannah. Lord, we pray that you will please help us to be like these two mothers, praying for the children creating the environment for our children to have the positive influence, spiritual influence, so that they can grow up to be uh, children who respect God, who love God, and be the witness that they can be. Please bless our mothers and our fathers and our mother figures and mothers-to-be, to be like Hannah and this unnamed woman. And we also pray for our offering. May you bless it. And may you would multiply so that the work that we do for our church and around this uh, community, may we would work for you. May you would shine your light through us, through this church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise team, please come on up. you to stand for our closing song, God Will Take Care of You.
You may be seated. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. And deacons, if you can please come forward and get ready to dismiss everyone. Just wanted to say the last words. Uh, the decoration and the flowers were prepared by Christine, and I was told Christine, Connie, and Jennifer Ramos. So I'd like to thank them for decorating and all the flowers that we have received. Yeah, and also deacons, if you can please stay here, all the men and deacons, uh, for a quick meeting after the worship. That will be great. Until we see you next week, may God bless you and keep you safe. Happy Mother's Day. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing Sent from the Savior above Showers of blessing Showers of blessing we need Mercy drops round us are falling but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as to Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we need. But for the showers we need.